late. Uh, we have a presentation on the art building project by our middle school art specialist, Lee Iannone. <laughs> Chris, could I give you a PowerPoint, please? Okay, um, this is a project that we actually have been working on for about three years. Um, I have a poster for the proposed illustration here for you guys to pass around. Um, so our project is officially called Blooming Brick by Brick, and it's designed by students. And our inspiration was, well, you should know, first of all, when I say our, it's um, Lisa Topoleski and I started this project. So I'm going to try and hold it together for you. Our inspiration started back in the fall of 2010 when Anke Wessels from Cornell invited us to go see a visiting artist. And her name is Lily Ye. And I actually have her book that I can also pass around. Um, Lily Ye is an international artist. And what she does is she works with communities to create community spaces. And through creating the arts and working together, she makes a sense of community among the people. And it's a time to heal. And it's a time to really spend time together. And what she did was we were invited, both the art teachers, the students, community artists, anybody who really wanted to go, went to go see her talk. And Lisa and I brought students. I brought the middle school art club. Lisa brought the um, student council. I also grabbed a couple um, local artists and teachers that wanted to go. And what Lily did at the end was she challenged us to come back to our own communities and see what, where we could, could do a project to bring around some change and, and a sense of belonging. And at the middle school, the auditorium was, was the space. So this is our project. Our design is outside the auditorium along the street road um, side. And what we wanted to do was make a reception area. And what the kids really envisioned was having their um, moving up ceremonies outside. I mean, right now, the PTSO sets up on the lawn, and they keep setting up a bunch of tables and stuff like that, and everybody's there. But what this really does is it ties in just so many possibilities. They envision having, having concerts outside and poetry readings where they could actually get out there and read their books to the little, their fifth grade books to the little guys. They could actually come out and sit outside under the pavilion and things like that. And what you're looking at is a 100 by 25 foot raised patio. It would go the entire length of the auditorium. It would have a retractable awning. This way we did not have to worry about um, winter weather, like snow buildup or safety issues that way. We'd, uh, that would also allow um, the firemen to get ladders up there if they needed to. We do have a shout out, shout out to the fire department to see whether or not we would need to put in a fire drive anyway in front of it. We don't know a fire lane. Um, we have a lot going on right now because we don't know what's happening. But the project itself, because you guys have to tell me yes first. <laughs> the project it itself, the kids have designed a mosaic. And the mosaic, that one up there, is just like make-believe or placement. They have designed one against the Tree of Life, which is Lillier's most popular symbol, is growing together and growth. Um, they want the decking of it to be inlaid bricks. And that's why they also called it blooming brick by bricks, because they heard about the history of Lansing. 
and that the middle school was actually built with bricks that were made at Brickyard Road and different things like that, and they wanted to incorporate that. And they also found out that there's ways of engraving bricks so they can put memorials and put their names and, and put poems or different things like that into the decking of the patio. And um, now with Lisa's passing, of course, they want, they want to dedicate the space to her. Um, they want it to be accessible by everyone. So right now, they, they like the idea of raising it right there outside the auditorium. And that, that door that you see is actually, you guys all know the auditorium. So that's right there to the left of the stage. That door needs a little work right now. It's supposed to be handicap accessible anyway, but if you walked it, you would see there's like a 10 inch drop. So I know I don't want my grandpa going with his wheelchair out that door. Um, so putting a patio up is actually making it safer for an egress out of the auditorium. If you open the door, things actually fall on you. So we need to fix that door, whether you know, we do the project or not, you guys want to fix that door. Um, <laughs> we envisioned the pathway connecting to the front of the auditorium where it is right now and putting a little memorial garden in the corner. So in this far corner over here, sorry, I don't have a laser pointer. We also had one of the community artists said, you know what, this would be a great space to put a nice big sign along the side of the building that said, what was happening in the auditorium for the year. I don't know about you, but it's really hard to read the sign when you're driving past it at 30 miles an hour. 40, isn't it 40 outside? Um, Depends on the time of day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they figured it would be an annual expense to print a sign, but to hang a sign, sort of like the read to me signs that told people when the events were. This way they would know when the theater performances are. They would know the moving up ceremonies. They would know when the concerts are. I mean, those are set dates that are on the websites anyway, but I'm sorry, we don't check that every day. Um, so this really was a space that they wanted. And so what I did is we started the mosaic, of course, because we got permission to do that. I actually presented this to Dr. Grimm and he said, go ahead with the mosaic, we're good, but we need to research the rest because it's pretty big. Um, may I? So our plan comes in phases. The first one is a tile mosaic, which like I said, is already underway. The second one is the retaining wall with the basic crusher run fill and ramp and railings. That's gonna take a little bit of time because of the grade of that, ro that section we need to bring in people, we need to bring in backhoes, and we need to use heavy enough stone that it's secure enough and safe enough for the kids. We want the foundation tubes for the awning at that point. This way they go to the frost line, to the footers, this way it's all taken care of. But the awning won't actually go in yet. Um, and of course, replacing that door. Step three was going to be the awning. It can be either retractable or snap-in. I really think the retractable would be the best thing because that way, like I said, if we have to pull it back for an emergency, it's possible other than sitting there unsnapping the whole thing. Um, and then last would be in laying the bricks. Now I know that we can't have a bunch of kids out there doing the backhoe. That's okay, we all understand that. I know little kids can sit there laying bricks though. Okay, and I think they would have, have a blast doing that. Um, so what I actually did is in my planning, I reached out to a few people. I reached out to Doug Milliman from the highway department who actually comes and helps lay the, the tar for at the school a lot. He's like, yeah, we can get that ramp in, no problem. I spoke to um, Steve Swayze, who is Lisa's brother and also a local contractor that does stonework and different things like that, and he's dying to help. And then I was lucky enough to get in touch with, actually he contacted me through Doug, um, Ed Levine, who also did the, all the community work for the playground down there. And he's raring to go. 
I mean, we just need your permission, basically. Um, he started contacting the people in the town to see, do we have enough space? Are we okay where we're at? And yes, we are. Okay, we, we can build there. We're fine with the road. The town says it's a school project, so we don't need a building permit. We don't need any of those little extra things because we're good on that. We do, however, have to do it through state ed or whatever processes we do here on campus for it. I know I went looking on the state ed crazy, crazy website, and I could not find anything about a raised patio needing approval. You guys may be able to dig deeper. I know MJ's contacted them, so I don't know if she's gotten feedback yet, but it is underway with trying to figure out where we could go with different things. Um, fundraising, Ed Levine actually has, was considering Harbor Fest would be a perfect way to possibly start getting money set aside for things like that. I mean, he had some really great ideas. This is our kids this week working on the mosaic. Their design is the tree of life out here in Lansing, transferring from winter to fall. So in, way in the back, the kids have the snowman with the lake in the background and the hills set up behind it. And then it transitions to the centerpiece where it's spring and fall, I mean spring and summer, and then ends over here in fall. There's going to be a second smaller one that has the tree itself with a poem that they still have to decide because we're holding off for a little while to really choose the perfect poem to write on it. Um, so this is the part we've got going so far. Um, may I? So here's where I need your help. So first of all, I need your blessing because I can't do it without you. Um, we need fundraising and we're going to need donations. The kids want this to be a community funded project. We do not want to put any more pressure on the taxpayers. I mean, I think it's wrong for us to ask people to give us more money, especially, you know, retired folks and stuff like that that don't really have it to fund things where other community members or donating time and materials could actually take care of that. So the kids want it to be a community funded project. The art club itself, over the past couple of years, raised $1,200 to pay for the mosaic. We did not get any money from the school for that. We set aside our money from the dances and different things like that that we actually do to purchase those supplies so that we didn't need to ask for anything. Um, for the inlaying of the floor, we're thinking we could do a buy a brick program, sort of like what the playground did with the, with the fencing, okay? Um, Lisa, before she passed, looked into this, and the, the co um, company that she looked into was Bricks R Us, and their base price for a brick is like $19, and it's a fundraising program. So, you know, you could boost that up to like 25 or 30, and then it'll start taking care of some of the other bricks that need to be bought, because with our patio, the size that it is, we figured it out to be 11,250 bricks we need for the decking. <laughs> so that's a lot of laying of bricks. Um, for this part, I don't personally feel that I'll be able to handle not only my teaching load, but art club and different things like that, and then also taking in orders for bricks and things like that. So I would definitely need help with somebody in the community to help to organize that or run that or collect that, different things like that. My friend Diane Nangeroni has um, volunteered to help me a little bit. I don't know if she's going to take it over <laughs> completely, but you know, she said she will assist in that. Um, and then we need your time. You know, Lily Ye's vision really is to have communities work together. And I can see, I have a lot of faith in this community. I've been teaching here for, the, for 13 years. And I've seen a lot of change. And uh, I think if we work together, we can make it work. Um, MJ recently, as in like this morning, I got it. <laughs> 
found a email from Steve Grimm from last year. And his vision was, okay, we could do it, but let's do it through a capital project. This way it goes through um, the, the state, it gets possible um, like funding or stuff like that. Um, I have to respectfully disagree with that because like I said, I don't, we don't want to put any more on the taxpayers. I mean, you've already heard MJ's discussion of, you know, we got to deal with the septic. We still have to deal with a lot of different things crunching down. And the last thing the taxpayers need is to drive past the middle school and see all this work happening right outside the auditorium and say, well, they got plenty of money. I don't want that to happen. And the kids don't want that to happen. So we really, we want to pull this together so we all do it together. I think that's all I got. You got questions? <laughs> you know, I, I personally think it's a great community project, a great idea. And I think it would solve, you know, one of the capital projects that we, we didn't pursue at one point was trying to figure out for the auditorium some more space so people after graduation or after a play could mingle as, as a in some place other than the front lawn. Right. I do know, because we are affecting a safety exit and stuff, we need to <coughs> study it a little bit right. and consult with our friends at the state. Do um, you think it would make sense maybe to, to ask the facility committee and uh, supporting people to look at it a little bit and flush out some of the details? I, you know, at least personally, I like the idea, but I know from past things we have to some unusual requirements sometimes from the right. state. We got to make sure we follow those. Well, MJ did consult with um, Jim. I'm not even going to attempt his last yeah. name. Um, <laughs> our our consultant, yep. and his suggestion was to hire a um, architectural engineer to really mm -hmm. look it over. Yep. I know that Mr. Levine, uh, Ed actually contacted a Mr. Penny. I don't know which one, which ones. Um, and they're pulling together an estimate of cost and what supplies we may need. Okay, they're currently Scott, doing Scott. that already. Okay. So, you know, that's as of yesterday's email okay. from Ed. I think it's, I think it's a, an amazing idea. My, my wife and I were, you know, we volunteered a lot with the MP3 project. Um, community project, I, I, was, I think that was my fourth or fifth, and I have to tell you, they're really amazing amazing projects and the ability to bring folks together. When I went to school here, we built a community playground in the elementary school. So um, I think it's a fabulous idea. I do think it needs a smidge more planning, but yeah. I, I do think it's, it's, a, it's a great idea. It really is. I'm trying to find out how much a brick costs. You know, <laughs> like what does a brick cost? Well, that so all I depends. If you, if you look at Lowe's, you could get a brick for 59 yeah, and cents. And, <laughs> and I've seen other, other places where they have bricks, memorial bricks. Uh, one around uh, here. Cas Castle Wasco housing. Yeah, Castle Wasco mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Our yeah. sidewalks. Our so, yeah, I think it's a great idea. It'd be, yeah. be a lot of fun. We just got to make sure we do it properly. Right. and Got to clear it with, you know, clear easements. Right. And, right. Yeah. right. So would that make sense, MJ or Chris? To yeah. Um, I, I, did get the, I did get the Thanks. Um, the one I did get the response from the uh, fire chief today, and and that accessibility is not a problem. So there's there's these little things that are going to come up. You know, we talked about a structural engineer for safety issues. Um, I, you know, I probably need to talk to the insurance company a little bit. Um, but again, I, I agree with everybody. This is a fantastic project. It. It really wasn't on my radar too heavily last year, a year ago. Um, you know, Steve kind of was working on it with, with Lee, and, and I went back and, and found this old email, but um, I think that I have the contacts that mm -hmm. we can try to push this a little better. There may be a little bit of, of upfront expense. You know, I can't just go to somebody and say, geez, would you drop this plan for us uh, and do it for free? Um, so I don't know if the, if the fundraising starts and, and they, they raise the money and then incur some of those initial expenses, or if the district wants to, you know, direct me to, you know, go out and get some of this initial um, investigation by the structural engineer, people of that nature, get that if, if it's going to be two, three thousand dollars, and then have this group pay us back, pay the district back um, uh, as they raise their funds as they move forward. I'm not sure the best way to handle that thing. That yeah. has to be your decision, right? 
Um, timing, the only issue I would have is if Ed wanted to dedicate like Harper Fest right. as that's a fundraising, that's coming quick. August, yeah. August something. Right. Mr. Harper mm. Fest, when is the... It's the week of the triathlon, I think. Yeah, I, I think it's the yeah. same So day. it's coming up fast. So we're going to have to look at Keep that. And sometimes things at the state don't move I, so I, fast. Well, and I'm, and I'm not sure how much we're going to have to okay. include state ed. Truthfully, yep. I, I think it was more an interest of the structural engineering. And the you safety, know, we don't have the four walls and right. the roof. Safety, egress, and all that kind of stuff. stuff. But so this, uh, Chris, is the safety committee, uh, the BOCES people, I remember, that side of campus is a little exposed. I'm just thinking in terms of emergency and safety issues. So um, we could review that. In our emergency facilities. plan, I mean, things like yeah, that. Yeah, that, I mean, the, so it would be open, more open to public, mm -hmm. like, because uh, the road's right there. Um, right. That was a concern, Depends. was how, what's, yeah. you know, how close. Yeah. So, I think, uh, yeah, but I, I think it's a great idea. I don't know, is there any, I think we're all kind of I yeah, think it's a great right? idea, but I think, um, I don't want to rush it, and then it's a big hiccup. Yeah, with right. the the financing, the fundraising, or whatever. I just want to make sure we cover our basics for us. Yeah, the facilities and, get a good, and good plan. what we actually have to pay out or whatever. I, I kind of want to suss out those details, so even this group understands yeah. that details. if if um if it's three thousand dollars to come up, is it, this group going to be able to raise three thousand dollars or whatever we decide? But I would rather see more details from our side to see how it really, really is going to pan out. Yeah, I see I fundraising. Fundraising is not an issue. I mean, I don't want the project to be a failure, and I want yeah. to make sure we had the details before. Right. To it. And and safety is an, an issue for all of us. That's why um, for the design we built in all the railings and different things yep. like that. If we have to adjust the grade, I mean, we're going to have backhoes and stuff out there to do this anyway. So if we need to adjust things and get a fence in or a tree line or something more of a visual border for kids from the road, that's something that can easily yeah, we just get gotta added follow, in. You know, there's some yeah. regulations on ramp right, elevations right. and all those kind of things we got to be confident mm -hmm. in so we do the right thing. Maintenance, right. future maintenance yeah, costs. Maintenance, yeah, so. Right, just a project, make sure it's successful. Yeah, I think getting it to the facilities committee makes sense. Yeah. You know, I have a question mm -hmm. about the, the roof. Right both the awning, the snap-in style awning, right. and retractable, I've dealt with both of them, and one of that size could be yeah. uh, incredibly right. expensive and also maybe very subject to wind damage. So as much as we don't necessarily want something that's year-round, that might be a more cost-effective way to yeah. make it a little more Okay. I just put the facilities committee and the engineer is probably in a better position to assess that. But I, I think it's a... Mm -hmm. I've always disliked the look of that part of the school. Yeah. It's the first thing when you come from the north, yes. and it's just a wall of brick. It's pretty cold. And, yeah, it's uh, cold. I think anything that you could do to security. make that a little <laughs> would be would really help. Oh, well, good. A great idea. Any community thing here, if it's feasible, we can make that happen. Great. I, I, if I can make a suggestion, I, 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 if, if Lee and some of her folks are, are really interested in starting the fundraising process in a timely fashion, I don't know that that would be hurt a, a problem because even if it, if it came short of that actual structure, there may be a, another, um, you know, uh, uh, landscaping uh, activity that could take place outside right. that door. We could, you know, the district could actually put in steps or something that or a ramp to the door or something that, that, you know, if they had to back off a little bit, if they've at least started their fundraising, then they, they have the funds going forward, um, you know, to do something with it. But it's going to take a couple of months to get all the pieces in place, and, and I hate to hold her up if, if this summer is, is kind of a critical time for that fundraising. Yeah, okay. I, I, the superintendent, uh, I yeah, think so we're... Uh, uh, I'm here, what I'm hearing is that you have a blessing to continue to move forward <laughs> in researching this project and that we're going to have the facilities committee pull together. And I think we're about due for a meeting. I'm not sure if yeah. one's <laughs> one on the calendar lately, but it would be nice if we could meet before, before you go on to the wrong side of the lake for a while. <laughs> Fabulous. Wrong side of the lake. Yeah. Fabulous. It's all the blue and gold, guys. So. It's all the blue and gold. <laughs> we just got to find a way to make this happen now. <laughs> thank yes. you. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you catch that one? Can I, can I just ask why I've got to
Um, so is Penny just you now? Dave and I. Okay. <laughs> so that okay. Easy, easy. Also, Whenever you want. <laughs> Everyone's welcome. Are we going to add? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dave's going to be upset. We're running a little bit late. <laughs> um, presentations are done. Next, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion for approval of our consent agenda. Second. Discussion. I guess we don't discuss these, do we? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain? Six zero zero. Motion passes. Okay, we have a number of action items. First action item being the approval of the appointment of Stuart Dean as volunteer school bus driver for fewer than 30 days per calendar year where such driving is unpaid and incidental to any terms or contract for hire. So moved. D discussion. Oh, Second. Motion. Is this a result of the issue we ran into with the sectional game and then getting to the senior trip? Right, and that's when I, I did the uh, emergency appointment to allow that to happen. Okay. Uh, this is the actual. Any more discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Six zero zero. Next action item, approval of the attached agreement between Kelly Bell, Sandy Koch, the Lansing School Districts for Nursing Services for the 2013-14 school year. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. In the contract, it calls out Christine Ribera specifically that will handle scheduling. And my only question to that is, should it just say the elementary school principal? in the event that Christine gets a better job and leaves us? <laughs> That's the only question I have. <laughs> it does specifically say... I would think it'd be position. Be title. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, it would make sense to... That can be adjusted, important. yeah. Okay. okay. Along with the... I mean, make, you could still move forward and we can make that yep, change. Yep, makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I would like to ask for a vote on the amended contract, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Changing the words from a specific person to the position of the job. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain? Six zero zero. Okay, next action item is approval of the attached DCMO resolutions, cooperative you purchase. Missed, uh, C. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Approval of the Attached an initial 2013-14 BOCES AS7 contract. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain. Again passes 6-0-0. Approval of the attached DCMO resolutions. Cooperative purchase school year. 2013-14, generic school year 2013-14, food and cafeteria supplies 2013. May I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Just for, primarily for opens meetings law, open meetings law, but I had asked a question regarding, you know, why don't we use our local TS TVOCs? And Mary June responded back very quickly. I don't know if you want to kind of chime in because you know much more about it than I mm -hmm. do. But uh, it just, the TST does a couple of small bids that, that we do participate in. I say that quietly because we probably shouldn't. But we do. Um, uh, but the DCMO runs a significant bid um, where, where they bring in, oh, gosh, oh, maybe a couple of hundred school districts. And they really go out and bid just about everything that we purchase. Um, and it's very, very thorough, and, and so that's why we do it with them. TST has to sign off on in order for us to do anything with a cross contract with another BOCES, so they're all set with it. Okay, thank you. Any more discussion? And just, uh, just a comment, in, and that's true with a lot of our different services. We go through uh, different BOCES and um, just to, for field trips and everything. So it's been much more cooperative in that realm for finding to make sure we get what our needs met. It's been good. It's good, been a good process. Okay. All in favor of action item D? All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Motion passes 6 
zero, zero. Action item E, approve the attached school-age child care program proposed staffing for summer 2013. May I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? No discussion. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain. Motion passes 600. Okay, action item F. Approve the attached bus bond <laughs> resolution for <laughs> bus purchase approved at May 21st, 2013 annual meeting. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain. Motion passes 600. Final action item. Number G, approve the following resolution for library discards at the middle school. And there was a uh, oh, resolved that the Lansing School Board deems the attached list of library books outdated and request disposal of the same. So moved. Second. Discussion. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstained. Motion passes 6-0-0. We will now adjourn the meeting. We will go have an executive session. No. no. Okay, we'll now leave for executive mm -hmm. session. No action will be taken after our executive. The executive will be. Okay. May I have a motion to go into executive session? For the purpose, for the purpose for discuss contract. Negotiations. And the employment of a particular, a particular individual. Mm -hmm. so, so moved. Second. 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 Okay. <laughs> Motion. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain. Motion passes 6 0 0. Um, we will now go no into business. executive session. There will be no business taken after we return. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, see you in a couple weeks.